Hi kids, who's ever eaten a Greek salad? <clears throat> or you've ever been to a Greek restaurant? Here we see a Greek salad and uh, if you look carefully at this Greek salad, it actually can tell you a lot about the Greek landscape and its climate and its people. Well, except for, let's see, tomatoes, they didn't have tomatoes or tomatoes, tomatoes in Greece in ancient times because they were grown only in the Americas. And it's only in around the late 1400s, 1500s, where they brought back to Europe by explorers and spread to other parts of the world. But the Greek salad, the, the mainstay, the main parts of the Greek salad include two items, at least, actually no, probably four items that we definitely associate with the Greek landscape. First of all, the cheese. What did we say the rocky landscape of Greece was not suitable for raising? What kind of animals that produce milk would it be difficult to raise on those rocky slopes? Not polar bears, not elephants. We're talking about cows, cattle. And so instead they raised goats for milk and cheese. They'd also raise sheep for their wool. They could live on the rocky hillsides, which don't have a lot of grass. You know, goats can eat all kinds of vegetation. They'll eat the herbs that grow on the hillside. And that's another thing that you'll see in the Greek salad. These herbs grow on the hillsides and can tend to, uh, they can grow in poor soil, rocky soil, the herbs. The other thing is you see in here, take a good look. What other things do you see in this Greek salad that you think can grow in a relatively dry, rocky uh, landscape, you know, hills on steep hillsides. One thing I see that definitely is grown all over Greece are these olives. Olives show you um, that this is a crop that Greece was able to produce in its, cl in its climate and its um, geography. Olives can grow on those rocky hillsides. And not only do they just eat the olives as they are, they'll create olive oil with the olives. And you might just see these yellowy colours here. That's where the oil has been poured onto the Greek salad. So the food even reflects the landscape. Like I said, the tomatoes came later on. Um, but definitely the goat cheese and the olives are items that reflect the landscape. They also produce a lot of grapes and the grapes would also pr be produced into wine. And any excess grapes and olive oil could be shipped on ships to other areas close by to the uh, Greek mainland and to some of the colonies where they needed olive oil or, or wine or grapes. So let's uh, expand this a bit. Um, you had a... Um, you had a discussion the other day, and in the discussion they asked you to come up with the reasons why you believe the ancient Greeks wanted to or needed to create new colonies outside of mainland Greece. So let's take a look. Okay, let's just follow my reading. Between 750 BC, we can also use BCE, and 550 BC or BCE, overpopulation and a desire for good farmland drove many Greeks to leave for other lands. They established colonies throughout the Mediterranean region and along the shores of the Black Sea. Now the Black Sea is further north. In establishing new colonies, the Greeks spread their culture. So that's an effect. It's not a cause. For them starting colonies but it is one of their effects uh, of, of, of colonizing or moving to other areas and settling there they took their way of life their culture including political ideas how to govern how to rule so they spread some of those ideas to other parts of that region that area another effect is this colonization led to the development of a thriving or a very successful trade network so they're creating trading routes with moving goods back and forth and the ideas are moving as well like ideas of 
how to live, how to govern, how to rule are spread into other areas. And there was an expansion or an increase in local industries. So say, for example, there was a lot of clay in one of these colonies, good clay for making pottery. You might see the pottery industry really expand, really do well there. And then those pots that were being created would be sent or exported out of that area, maybe back to the Greek mainland or maybe to other colonies or to other uh, civilizations close by that wanted that kind of pottery. And in turn, these people who are making these pots or creating other items or growing new items that they didn't uh, have in other areas would become powerful or wealthy. They would, in turn, this would create a new group of wealthy citizens seeking political power. So these people would become wealthy. They start to see that they're becoming powerful when it comes to what money they own, what uh, wealth they own, and so they want to have a bigger say in the government. So here we see the causes in this paragraph. Then we see that they this is an effect spreading their culture and the political ideas. And here you also see the effects that led to a development of a thriving trade network and people also becoming wealthy and wanting to have more power in government. So if you've got a king in power, for example, and yet you've got this group of very wealthy individuals, those wealthy individuals might resent being told what to do by a king especially when they've got as much wealth as he has. So you might see a change in government, either through peaceful means or more forceful means. And we'll be looking at that later um, this month. I would focus on this first paragraph, though, for the effects. And many kids, uh, when they in the discussion, they did mention, and by the way, it might be a good idea at this point to open up the document that you created, your social studies document, to look at your list of reasons for the colonization by the ancient Greeks. So open up that document and be taking a look at the list of reasons for the Greeks colonizing. And there will be a question on the assessment which you have. I'm going to give that a short assessment tomorrow. However, it's going to go on next term's grade. So open up the document that you created yesterday after doing the discussion. And then we're going to go over the list of reasons for the ancient Greeks expanding into other areas and settling other areas. In other words, colonizing and creating coloni colonies elsewhere outside the Greek mainland. So, if you listed off overpopulation, that is that is correct. If you also said they wanted a they had a desire for good farmland, or you said they didn't have enough good farmland, that would be correct too. Now, some students in the discussion also mentioned that there was political instability. In other words, there was the possibility of the people rioting, people becoming unhappy with their rulers, that can go in your list too. So if you've got an overpopulation and you've not got enough good farmland, there's a possibility of people starving. And so we would have overpopulation, not enough good farmland, Next effect then would be possible starvation, people starving. And also, this, this uh, people starving is going to start making people angry. And it's going to create situations within those city-states, those Greek city-states of the possibility of social unrest, people protesting, maybe fights against the government. And so rulers would be very wary that their people have enough to eat. 
that their basic needs are being met. Otherwise, they could see themselves possibly being overthrown. So overpopulation, a desire for good farmland, or on, on the other hand, you could just say not enough good farmland. Possible starvation, people starving. Social unrest, people becoming unhappy with the government. And so when I see this overpopulation and a desire for good farmland, there are effects of this too within these reasons. So not just overpopulation. If we've got an overpopulation and we've still got uh, enough farmland, we're fine, but there isn't. But if you've got overpopulation, not enough good farmland, people are going to be in, end up starving and they're going to become unhappy with the government. Now, another thing, let's uh, move from this. Another thing is this. Um, we could say one of the causes is the growth of trade. We could say people saw um, that there's trade opportunities if they moved elsewhere. So we could have this as a cause as well as an effect. So in your list, you could have um, wanting to trade. Wanting to trade could be a reason for you wanting to move to another colony. You might think, oh, if I move to that area, I know in that area I can grow certain crops that don't go in my city state and because I can grow them there and we can grow too much for what we need we can trade those items back to the mainland to the city state back in the mainland we're going to focus on this side here at the moment we're not going to so much focus on this side so there's a grow the ink the interest in trade could be a cause. That is also an effect. It's going to be a growth of trade. With the effects though, we do notice that Greek culture is definitely going to, to spread. Their way of life is going to spread. And way of life can include not just their arts and their music, but also political ideas, how to run their government. Right? Effects, like I said, the cause and the effects are very similar. There's an, an interest in, in trade, and it's going to result in increasing trade and industry in other areas outside of mainland Greece. Some people are going to become wealthy. We will call these people aristocrats, and we'll get to that later in, um, in the month. These aristocrats um, are the group of rich men. They're going to be like wealthy landowners or they've become wealthy through trade or creating certain items. And we'll deal with this part later this month. This is where we're dealing with government changes. New items from other areas that, were, that they needed would be imported. Things that they had excess of, plenty of, they might export to other areas. And here you can see trade routes, the red lines represent trade routes. Here we see Greece in the southeastern part of Europe. They're trading from city-states such as Athens to North Africa, into Asia, to the Black Sea up here, and to other parts of Europe. And they settle over here in these colonies that are shown as orange, this is modern Marseille. Today, this is Marseille in southern France, also on the Spanish east coast over here near Barcelona. Bulgaria up here, and also in Turkey over here. So, let's get out of this. Um, you see those trade routes? Oh, one other thing. One other thing. Now, let's 
so just get out of that. Okay, one other thing that's not listed here, which I think is very important, oops, is very important, is that these Greek city-states were very, very close to each other, very close to each other, some of them, right? So um, there's no mention in here in these causes, and, and I think it should be mentioned. Some of the kids did mention it, and it was mentioned in the reading. What also should be in here is wars, wars between different city-states, wars over land, wars over good farmland could sometimes take place. So that would be one of the causes too, to avoid wars with other city-states close by. Um, let's go here. And with some of these Greek city-states being so close to each other and with a shortage of good farmland, you could see, actually this one doesn't show it, let's go back to that previous one. Um, the, you could see that city-states could come into conflict with each other, simply over, fighting over good farmland. And so that would have been a good enough reason um, to want to leave, especially if the neighbouring city-state was generally more powerful than you. So, say for example, we've got city-states so close to each other, when their farmland, um, is, is, is there's a shortage of it, and they start to expand closer to another city-state, there's going to be the possibility of wars between the two city-states that are close together. So possible wars would be another reason to um, avoid um, moving, moving any further closer to another uh, area of another city-state. And instead, let's say the leaders got together and said, let's create a colony elsewhere, especially when they knew there was better land elsewhere. So... Tomorrow you have a little uh, assessment on this Greek geography um, unit. I put Greek geography and settlement quizlets in there for you to practice with. These are in my modules, and I'll put the links into my um, into my announcement today too. And you've got all these resources that you can use. This is the video from the other day, and. I'll put the links in these for you. So you've got all of these resources that you can be looking at in my module. Okay, I've created these resources for you to explore. So not just Greek geography, you can you can move ahead if you want to. That's fine with me. Okay. So I've also set up Ed Menson Kids and I'm gonna have my sixth grade class today practice opening it up and then we're going to be rolling that out very soon. We're going to have some meetings today to discuss it. Um, but uh, thank you for the attention. Please practice with that Quizlet. And, and I'll put in a link for the video as well for you to watch. But enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Don't forget we have a little assessment tomorrow. Please review your notes and the list that we put for causes of the uh, colonisation. Review my video from the other day and definitely review the quiz. Thank you and enjoy your day. Bye now.